You're tuned to the Steve Donahue Show on CPL Radio, your one-stop daily source for Steve's take on the world of books. And now your host, the book critic who literally reads everything, Steve Donahue. Greetings, fellow patrons of the Cedarburg Public Library, and welcome back to the Steve Donahue Show, where we discuss bookish news, views, and reviews with our smiles turned toward the great orb of the heavens. It's Friday, and the weekend beckons, so I thought we might wrap up the week by doing my favorite thing, talking about new books. I've got a variety of titles to mention to you, and with any luck, at least one of them will sound like something you'd like to investigate. We'll start, oddly enough, with something old, uh, the Library of America. Most of you will be familiar with this reprint series of pretty little hardcover editions, complete with sewn bindings and acid-free pages and a neat little cloth bookmark. One of the latest entries in this series is a real winner. It's called The Western and it reprints four classic American novels from the 1940s and 1950s set in the Old West. The Oxbow Incident by Walter Van Tilburg Clark, The Searchers by Alan LeMay, Shane by Jack Schaefer, and most delightfully of all, Warlock by Oakley Hall. Each of these four short novels has its own distinct charms. None was chosen amiss. And the collection is edited by Ron Hansen, whose own book, The Assassination of Jesse James by the Coward Robert Ford, has a strong claim to itself being a classic of the subgenre. If you're only familiar with the Western as a kind of thin, plot-driven shoot 'em up uh, that was once popular, the, the, in fact, the most popular paperback in the American book market, you might want to try this volume to see what can be done with the template by writers of a higher order of talent. Uh, and speaking of a writer with a high order of talent, that will almost certainly be the impression left by our next writer, Susanna Clark whose last novel was a long and utterly fantastic thing called Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell, which mixed a kind of genteel sorcery with the sprawling Napoleonic era to produce a modern fantasy that had even non-fans of the genre turning its pages. It's been a long time since Clark has written a book, and her new one, Piranesi, although likewise suffused in fantasy, is scarcely a quarter of the length of its predecessor. This new book tells the story of a man named Piranesi who lives in a wondrous house that is its own ecosystem. It's a lovely place, full of ornate rooms and gorgeous statues, but the tides flood some of its lower halls, and the winter snows can make some of its vestibules inhospitable, and it's the only world Piranesi has ever known. He's not alone in it. He's periodically visited by a being called the Other, who's seeking help with a vast research project of his own and who may hold the keys to understanding both the house and Piranesi himself. Throughout the book, Clark uses a very different register than the one that ruled Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell. The storytelling is every bit as confident, but this narrative gets more intensely dreamlike the more practically Piranesi speaks of his life in the house. The whole thing can be read in one pleasant afternoon, but the quiet imagery of the thing will linger with you long afterwards. Uh, Our next book is something you might not spot in your local bookstore because it's a self-published title, The Boy King by Janet Wertman. It's the third installment in Wertman's series of historical novels set in the Tudor era and revolving around the prominent Seymour family, not only Jane Seymour, who became the third wife of Henry VIII and the mother of his only legitimate male heir, young Edward, but also her two ambitious brothers. As its title indicates, this third book concentrates on the boy who became King Edward the Seventh or the Sixth, rather, and briefly ruled a kingdom on the verge of being torn apart, both by the ambitions of his nobility and the clashes between his new reformed religion and the old faith of of Catholicism, most most prominently represented by his sister Mary. Wertman writes about all this with a skill that's every bit as research grounded as the best of Tudor fiction but that also never forgets the curious teenage fragility of its main character. Because the author made the choice to self-publish these books, there's a good chance you've never encountered them, and this recommendation is meant to compensate for that. Uh, And we'll finish up with a fun oddity that's actually about fun oddities. Uh, Great adaptations um, by uh, Stevenson Professor of Biological Sciences at Vanderbilt University, Kenneth Catania. Uh, The book stars a handful of curious, strange animals of the world that at first seem far too specialized and baroque to have ever come about by means of natural selection. 
Catania talks with the specialists who devote their lives to understanding just exactly why the star-nosed mole looks the way it does, for instance, or how an eel could possibly have developed the ability to generate enough electricity to kill a horse. Many other equally unlikely creatures slither, hop, and skitter across these pages, and Catania writes about them all and their human devotees with a wonderful, fresh energy that will leave you wanting to know more. And there you have it, fellow patrons, just a small handful of the new books that have filled my reading hours lately. I hope they'll tide you over until next week, uh, and in the meantime, I'll sign off for now and wish you a very good bookish day. The Steve Donahue Show is a production of CPL Radio, a service of the Cedarburg Public Library located in Cedarburg, Wisconsin.